It's time for the new year and the celebrations that go with it. Auspicious times, sweetmeats, new clothes, new habits and of course, games. When the sun moves from Pisces to Aries, the harvest season ends and the new year begins. Welcome to Kaleidoscope where we are positive, daring and different and wishing you a very happy new year. Today on the show, we are wondering how we marry tech and tourism. We are asking tough questions about Aurudu with some young people and we are visiting the Salvation Army store. Like what you are seeing, subscribe and follow us and like us. Don't forget, Kaleidoscope is on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. A happy new year and a massive thank you to our wonderful partners on the show, Selico Live, CDB and The Daily Morning. CDB Hybrid Leasing. Enjoy exclusive interest rate and much more for hybrids, plug-in hybrids and EV vehicles. Now for a look at the week that was on CDB Snapshot. Some great news. Sri Lanka's tourism industry earns over 1 billion US dollars during the first quarter of 2024. Plans are afoot to internationalize the Hingurakgoda domestic airport with a 17 billion rupee investment. The government of Sri Lanka settles nearly 2 billion US dollars worth of foreign debt and interest. Chechnya announces a ban on music considered too fast or too slow. Russ Cook also known as the hardest geezer, completes his epic run of the length of the African continent. Tesla announces its Robotaxi, a self-driving car to be unveiled in August this year. King Charles III opens Balmoral Castle for intimate tours for the first time ever. Mexico declares the 19 feral felines living on the grounds of its national palace to be living fixed assets, a title that's usually given to buildings. on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Silly go life. Welcome to Silly go life news capsule. In this age where everything is about tech and we have a booming tourism industry, it's time to marry the two. The new age traveler is all about using tech to check out destinations, travel hotspots, accommodation, attractions, entertainment and cuisine. So I asked Shenuka Hapugoda, the CEO of Balamu, a revolutionary travel app, an idea that stemmed from audio guides to give the real history and legends of tourist spots about how tourism can be married to tech. So looking at the increasing numbers of tourists we're seeing in Sri Lanka, how do you think, in what areas do you think technology can actually help be helpful for tourists to navigate? So, well, if you look at the current landscape, things like Booking.com, Agoda, Airbnb have already kind of opened up the space. Like, if you looked at it a few years ago, before those came on board, to kind of find accommodation and places like that would have been a lot harder. Um, and then uh, when you look at um, something like Seagiria, if you climb Seagiria, you're just climbing a rock. Whereas if you climb Seagiria using Balamo, then you kind of get that fuller experience, you get to understand and you get to uh, see and hear all the history and culture that surrounds it. So what happens to employment in the industry? Does this mean tech takes over what the humans are doing? Would humans become redundant? No, I don't think so. I think you need to kind of look at it in a way that um, at the end of the day, Sri Lankan hospitality is a big thing and that's never going to get replaced by tech. And all that tech is going to do is kind of give you the tools and the, these things to be able to give your clients an enhanced experience. So I think um, it's important that we kind of leverage tech and then allow the human capital to do things that, you know, tech can't do. So what challenges do you foresee in Sri Lanka actually ensuring that tech is optimized. There is a bit of resistance from the uh, people in the industry sometimes because they see it as a threat as opposed to a tool. So I think it's important that that mindset shifts. Um, and also I think certain regulations and like the um, 
uh, laws need to kind of be changed a bit. Like simple things like being able to register with SLTDA, being a tech company is something that's only progressing now. So, yeah. How has Balamu fared since its launch? It's been a challenging few years, but yeah, we are slowly kind of seeing it picking up now. And yeah, things are looking good. And we're looking at kind of doing a few more exciting things with it, like experience booking, treasure hunts, lots of fun stuff. So yeah, it's been Lots good. to look forward to. Yeah. And now for a look at the markets this week. Positive news from the Colombo Stock Exchange. The old share price index crossed the 12,000 mark for the first time since February 2022. Oil prices are just below 90 US dollars per barrel as US oil inventories rise by 3 million barrels to the highest of 364 million barrels over the past year. US oil exports have increased with the two largest markets for US crude being the Netherlands and China. Gold is edging towards 2350 US dollars per ounce, the highest in recorded history due to increased geopolitical risk fueled by buying momentum from central banks and retail investors in Asia. Britain is officially protecting an apartment decorated with eccentric accents from top to bottom by Ron Gittens, an artist who died five years ago. You can now take the stairs to the top of a waterfall if you visit Ecuador's Al Payon del Diablo, the Devil's Cauldron, which got its nickname because of the belief that the devil himself resides within it. There's always a frenzy when it comes to April. It's all about preps for the Singhala and Tamil New Year. And don't forget the games and the traditions that surround this time of year. There's much food on the table. Swings become the play area for adults and children alike. The sarong and cloth and jacket become the norm. And there's the tradition of Ganu Denu and anointing of oil, all to mark the New Year. But the question is, with the changing times, how much of an impact does Aurudu have on today's young people? To find out if it does or does not, I invited four young adults to the studio today. Nisheda Indraratna, Shankesha Gautamarajan, Yuvini Balasurya and Talal Naushad. What does the Tamil and Singhala New Year mean to you? I think Singhala and Tamil New Year, it's on the top of my mind, it's a time of celebration, it's a time of sharing love. And uh, for me, uh, simply, it's a time of a lot of smiles, happy smiles. It has changed over the past couple of years. Uh, it used to be full of friends and now it's basically me and my family, which is, and it's more of us celebrating together, going to the temple, going to Kovi in the morning and then home, it's a small puja. And basically that has been it recently. Basically about family and then it's about food. It's about family because we have our immediate relatives, all of the extended family. We have an excuse basically to meet all of these people during our celebrations. And the food, well, it's scaun cookies, but we do cook it uh, at home. And it's my mom's excuse to make me stop working, <laughs> stop studying and make me concentrate for the only time in the kitchen. So Aurudu is like that one occasion where everyone drops all their work, prioritizes family over everything. And in this world where you know work, we live in a constant work-based life, so it is a reason and a tradition that we all follow to go back to visit family and prioritize family over everything else. Do the traditions and uh, you know the cultural uh, things we do during New Year, do those have any meaning to you at all? There was times when it used to have meanings, right? There were mostly when during my grandparents were there. They really had that culture and all holding it together. But right now, Singular Tamil New Year is more basically a holiday for us where we get to enjoy out, go out with our friends mostly. And basically it has become a holiday. It is a holiday, but it has actually become a holiday right now for me. Does the Singular and Tamil New Year have relevance to your generation? You know, our grandparents used to be those catalysts. They used to um, sort of be that gel of holding these families together. But uh, for me, of course, now that all of my grandparents, they have passed away, we are drifting apart from the traditions and all of that. And I think it 
does not have much relevance as we used to have uh, when we were small. In the current trend, there are modern things first versus millenniums, then versus Gen Z. Likewise, people constantly change, things constantly change, technology constantly change. So keeping that in mind, I think New Year, that traditional thing aspect we follow is very important that because that is that one event where connects us back to our roots even though we progress forth in a really vast land it is that one thing that connects us within our roots. So are there any lessons or any values that you take from these? One is the discipline they have, they maintain throughout. The second thing is uh, as we mentioned the family because as, as far as I know most of the time this Aaru celebration happens where a bunch of people, entire family get together on I think one of the big houses or up one of the father's grandparents houses and they do the entire thing. So because of that, uh, that one occasion where they all come into for the sake of the tradition and they follow it from tip to toe and the food variety, everything makes much more sense. So yes, I believe in that as well. I learned that you don't have to want something in return if you really want to be generous. And I also learned what respect truly means in a Sri Lankan context. I don't think anyone else does it the way that we do respect. Do you think this New Year actually unites this country or does it polarise this country? Singha and Tamil New Year has been not, has been a, something that has brought together friends, has brought together strangers to friends, people who I meet at the Koel, people who are, have just come home, I don't know who they even are, they just come home and just made friends. So yeah, definitely had I think it unites people. Majority of my Muslim friends, uh, Malay burger friends used to love, they used to enjoy our sweets and uh, we used to play all these games and there were even uh, friends of mine who actually won this Aurudu Kumari uh, competitions regardless of them being Muslims or Malays. I think it definitely unites people across ethnicities across Sri Lanka. Aurudu or single and time in New Year really brings people together, it unites and I don't see it polarizing the different sects um, anytime soon. Regardless of religion, ethnicity, whatever it is like, and culture, we all know when out of the season comes you know what to expect and we all go towards that. So because of that I feel it's a uniting factor. In these times of giving new life in a new year, we visited the Women of Worth or WOW shop at the Salvation Army at Slave Island. Manned by an able team, the single mothers or those who have no income produce some beautiful linen, uniforms, knickknacks and cards. Let's find out more about Women of Worth. My name is Fatima Shama. I have a two kids. Uh, boy and girl. I'm a single parent. Uh, 18 years before I came to the Salvation Army, there is uh, one of Captain She's talked to me. For women like Shama, Women of Worth, a social enterprise by the Women's Ministries of the Salvation Army Sri Lanka, is a godsend. Little by little, I learned from her uh, the cross stitch. A um, lot of cross stitch orders we did. Some lot of order, uh, we did the perros and lot of Christmas items we did. Um, after that, I start to stitch. Uh, I learn from the stitching the uniform and the blouse, and the saris, uh, hem stitching and everything I learn. Designed for single mothers and women who are in distress financially, the program not just upskills but empowers these women with self worth and self respect. Now I'm doing this work, uniform and tablecloth and kitchen towel and duster and pot holders, lot of uh, stitching, bed sheet, bed cover and everything, bed runner, all are we are stitching, I learn here and now I'm okay from here, very happy to staying and working here. So here's to a prosperous harvest season that's also about giving and a new year of plenty. We'll be back next week.